Hi and welcome back to my series of tutorials on FM sound design using the Sonicware Liven XFM. In the last couple of episodes we've gone through the features of the panel and we've introduced what's called the library engine. Today we're going to talk about the XLab engine. This is the first of the three morphing engines available and I think one of the most significant and important features that the device has to offer. So let's turn the device on. As when we selected the um, library engine, we press Funk and Synth. We can use the value knob um, to select, in this case, XLab. Below the, the four upper sound design knobs, we can see what the primary and secondary function of each knob is. So the first knob can be used to select a bank. So I think I'll go for a pad again. So I've selected pad bank one, and now I can select the sound within that pad. Uh, bank, I'm going to morph, which I shall explain, all the way to the sound one sound side, so as I can hear this pad to see how I like it. Maybe something a bit less bright. Okay, that's interesting, sort of subtractive synth source sound. So now I'm going to select the sound which I'm going to try and combine that with using the morphing features. So I'm going to turn the morph knob all the way to the other side so I can listen to sound 2. Um, shift to select the bank. So I will go to, maybe I'll morph it with a string sound. So. like that one so we're going to work on something between this and this so um, just like previously we still have access to the release control which will apply to any of the sounds on this spectrum we have access to what's called the color control the color control will adjust how the morphing happens between the two sounds the tone control, like in the library engine, allows us to set the amount of feedback that's in use. So let's try adjusting the tone. So you can hear we have a brighter sound in one case. This affects both of the sounds as opposed to adjusting them individually. The secondary function under this knob is a little bit more complicated. Um, I'll go back to discussing it when I go back to discussing the color control. But for now, let's experiment simply turning this knob. So this is our second sound. So you can hear probably that around the middle of the control there is a jump. The way that the FM morphing works relies on um, locking of parameters to maintain musicality and I guess this is a good segue to talking a little bit about what FM synthesis is. FM synthesis uses a series of sine wave oscillators which are adjusting each other's frequency. This adjusts the timbre. When the frequency of an operator adjusting another one is a harmonic, that is an integer multiple of the frequency, then we end up with a resulting sound which is still in tune with the fundamental pitch I'm playing. If they are not multiples of each other, integer multiples of each other, i.e. not harmonics, then we get inharmonic sounds. Um, similarly, when morphing between the envelope, the envelope times and the envelope amounts, it's possible that certain envelopes become longer or shorter than others when originally they weren't intended to. 
So that brings us to this locking parameter here. The locking parameter allows us to select whether there is locking, meaning only allowing integer multiple steps of the pitch and enforcing the relationships of the envelopes up to certain points where they switch. So by default, everything is locked. The reason you might not want to unlock this fully is because we'll be morphing the pitches through all possible intermediate values. So you will probably hear a lot of inharmonious sounds. So right at the end, harmonious. You have the capacity not just to lock the pitch, but the envelope or both. So this is now find that for some combinations of sound that jump in the middle can be quite jarring for some of them it's much less jarring it really relates to the function of the operators since the FM engine doesn't know what you intend them to do it simply maps operator one to one two to two and so forth so finally I'll talk about the color knob and then we'll experiment a little bit with changing the the timbre using the other features so the color knob allows us to control how the locking works. So specifically, we're locking the pitch and the envelope. This allows us to adjust when the jumps happen for which of the operators. And the result is for all intermediate pitches, um, intermediate, sorry, morph levels, you're going to get quite different timbres. So let me set this to some value, maybe over here. <laughs> So let's say I like that. So I haven't actually done any FM sound design here. All I've done is pick two presets. I've selected an algorithm by ear. You don't need to understand the meaning of the colors that are described. Maybe I'll come back and adjust the feedback amount a little. Okay, so I think this could... This could probably do with a filter. I'm going to again use a low pass filter, but instead of the rising falling envelope shape, I'm going to use the falling only envelope shape. Um, initially, I'm gonna turn the resonance up, the cutoff down, the depth to an intermediate value, and... So as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, the depth, because the, en uh, the envelope and the filter is applied on a track basis and not a note basis, you can end up with re-triggering sounds because it's a paraphonic filter. So usually it's better to select a relatively low depth if you intend to overlap your playing. If you intend to play a chord and release, play a chord and release, it doesn't matter. But if you're re-triggering, it does matter. So. resonance is a bit high. Okay, sounding pretty good. Um, just like I did in the previous tutorial, I'm going to see if I want to use any of these um, uh, LFO routings to the pitch or to the filter. So that's sounding reasonable to me. Um, I'll probably add an effect here just to see how it sounds. So let's go for a different effect. I think I used reverb last time, so I'm going to use chorus this time. 
So again, I'm going to set a send amount uh, just to a modest level. I'm going to set the volume level of the effect to something intermediate. I'm going to set the speed to something intermediate. I'm going to turn this send amount up. Okay, sounds okay. Turn the send down. Okay, so now we've gone through, we found two sounds we liked, we combined them, we experimented a little, we added a filter with an envelope, we added some uh, movement with the LFO, and we've added an effect. So let's play a little bit. So note that, again, with an external keyboard, we have actual velocity sensitivity. For now, the only velocity we have access to is via this knob, which can be recorded in real time or step edited in the sequencer. So let's see how velocity uh, modulates the sound. So there's not a big timbral change for this sound. Some sounds have a very significant timbral change as you adjust vo uh, velocity. In this case, it's mostly volume. But I think you will agree that we have something now that sounds relatively different to where we started and also relatively interesting. So um, thanks for listening to this episode. Next time I'm going to come back and discuss the next of the FM morphing engines, in this case known as the X-Form engine. Thank you for listening.